Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Shop with Russ. And my camera's sitting way up high for some reason. I gotta see if I can point it down a little bit. All the room up top and no room down here, so glad to have every each and every one of you. Uh, hopefully, it'll be a great show, another great show, I should say. Um, I've gotten a lot of trying to of emails and people asking about doing uh, another section on uh, Corel Draw. So I uh, had been contemplating on doing it and not doing it, and then I invited somebody and they couldn't come this week. So I said, you know what, this would be a good time to do another one on Corel Draw. Matter of fact, the last time I think we did the Corel Draw was back when I was on with Charles and we did the, uh, yeah, we did it back then. So it's been a while, so I'm going to go over some of the it would take me for a lot longer than an hour to go over everything on Corel Draw, and I've actually, if I get enough emails and people wanting me to, I'll do some, some more series of, uh, as far as YouTube videos, uh, tutorials on it. So that that's an idea also. It just depends on how many people out there want me to do it. But one thing I did learn that is really fantastic is that I can actually use uh, the vectors. In Corel Draw, and they will transfer over very, very nice over to uh, VCarve in order to use them on my CNC. So all these patterns I've been making all these years uh, and have collected all these years, uh, I can put them right on, make them work on my CNC without too much of a problem. So that's that's one big plus, and I'm very happy about that. All those I've got oh. I don't even remember last count how many patterns I have, but all of them I can transfer over and use them on this CNC. So that's really, really great news for me. So, uh, announcements before we get into um, introducing everybody. Don't forget about the website giveaway that's still going. Uh, free website for all of y'all out there who are listening and everybody out there who responds. Uh, the rules have changed a little bit. You don't have to worry about the uh, the uh, words anymore. All you have to do is simply uh, like me or um, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, all that information is on simplywoodencreations.com. Go across the menu bar over to contest. Follow it down. And it'll open up and to the giveaway, and you will see all the information there. And it will be open until July 23rd. 11.59 p.m. July 23rd. So the giveaway is still on for the website. Plenty of time. I extended it for y'all to be able to enter. I would also real quick like as another uh, thing out there. I've got a good friend out there. I hope he's listening uh, and I hope he's in the uh, YouTube chat right now. Uh, Steve French. Um, Steve French and I have become real close friends lately. Uh, he lives here in Lakeland, or I live in Mulberry, he lives in Lakeland, which is only a few minutes, 30 minutes from me. And so uh, we've been getting together and having lunch probably once a month and uh, having a good time. I really enjoy him. He's a really nice guy. Uh, we've become really close. But anyway, it's his birthday today. So a big shout out to uh, Steve French. Everybody wants to uh, unmute yourself now, you can and tell him happy birthday. But big shout out to Steve French and happy birthday, buddy. Happy, uh, really birthday. Enjoy happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> but uh, th th he's a real good, not real good guy. He got me involved in the Lakeland Woodworking Club, so really great guy. And happy good, happy birthday! Enjoy being around you. And also to my sponsors, uh, Devolable Technologies. They're the ones that's actually giving the website away through me uh, for web design, development, and hosting. Visit devolable.com. Olivewood 2000 for a beautiful, elegant Holy Land olive wood. Go to Olivewood 2000 on eBay today. And FastCap for innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to FastCap. So I've gotten all my sponsors plugs in there. So let's go down the list real quick and start introducing ourselves so we can get right to the show. And I'm going to be get probably getting updates. Uh, we already discussed this from Charles on the, the NASCAR's race on tonight, and Charles and I are NASCAR fans. A lot of the other, a lot of them on the panel ain't, and they might not be back next week either. So. They just turned <laughs> left again. <laughs> so anyway, we might be getting some NASCAR updates, but let's start on my right, and we'll torture the, the newbie that just got here. And he's not a newbie on the panel, but the newbie guy that just got in here last, and that's Tommy Gonzalez. 
He disappeared. <laughs> can you guys hear me? All? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, my name is Tommy Gonzalez. You can find me at Tommy G Workshop on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and my website, TommyGWorkshop.com. Good to have you back. And next to him is Mr. Russ. The other Russ. Yeah. Yep, uh, Russ Meadows. You can find me on Facebook uh, under that name, and also uh, I have a Facebook page, Rusty Nails Woodshop, and also uh, same name on Instagram. And then next to him, he's a newbie to the show. I've met Michael uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, we've become uh, friends. So I invited him on the show tonight. But it's Michael Chipster. It's at Chipster. Chipster. Yeah. The, the T's not in there. It's Chipster. Oh, you, you, I still can't hear you. There we go. Red lights off. Hey, Michael. Thanks, my name is Michael Chipser. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Michael Chipser, and on Facebook as well, Wood Chips. It's my small business page. Wood Chips, cool. Now you and, I, and I don't like NASCAR. <laughs> Do you? Uh, uh, real quick though, because you're very new to us or to the, the panel and a lot of people out there. Uh, what is your primary like woodworking? What do you do most or woodworking? You know what I'm saying? Um, here lately, CNC signs. I make signs every day now here lately. But uh, in the past, I do a little bit of everything. If you look on the Facebook page, you can find pictures of everything I, I make. So cool. And then next is Mr. John. Pardon me, I'm eating uh, strawberry shortcake here. Uh, <laughs> you didn't bring it for me. Uh, it got brought to me, so sorry, dudes. You can watch him eat it. <laughs> uh, yeah. John Schaffner, you can find me on Facebook under my name, and I have my YouTube channel that I just started. Uh, you can find my intro on there. Uh, that's about it. Great. And then Mr. Donald? I'm Donald Matthews. Uh, my YouTube channel is Donald Vlogs of Fives Woodshop. My Twitter and Instagram and all that is there on my YouTube channel. And I've got a website called Redneck Know How, but Redneck Don't Know How. Redneck Know How dot com, but Redneck Don't Know How to do NASCAR. Oh, uh, you guys! <laughs> and then Mr. Dave, Dave Gatton. Thank you, Russ. My name's Dave Gatton. You can find me under uh, Dave Gatton on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Great. And then uh, he's new tonight as far as uh, he hasn't been with us in a while, but uh, he's been on the show. He's back, comes f way back from when Charles and I were doing the show, and that's Mr. Dan. Na Dan Ingi Britson. Ingi Britson. Inger Britson. Inger Britson. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Dan. Uh oh, I think Dan froze up. Yep. Damn. All right, Dan. Sorry, but you kind of like froze up, so we'll move on down to uh, maybe his. Uh, it'll get a little bit better. Uh, to next is Chris. Chris Ahern. Hey guys, Chris Ahern here. You can find me on Facebook at the Old Cranky Workshop, uh, on YouTube under Chris the Wheeler. And right now you're supposed to find me in Utica for a road race, but I decided to blow it off and continue working on the house with my wife this weekend. In fact, that's the phone call I just took. They were checking on me, wanting to know where the hell I was. <laughs> so, you ain't there, that's for sure. No, I'm not. Uh, I didn't feel like doing the four-hour drive this morning, so I just bagged it. So, uh, And if I step away during the show, I apologize. we got thunder showers rolling in. I get all my gears on the back of the truck. So I no guess problem. right now we move it. I'll be right back. At, go go ahead. Actually, about 30 minutes before the show started, our uh, uh, the internet went out around here, so uh, uh, we had some bad thunderstorms. So I'm glad it came back on. And then, last but not least, my good buddy old Charles. Dear. Hi. How y'all is? Uh, uh, my name is Russ Ingerbretson. I'm a postal <laughs> worker. 
I live in upstate New York. You might find me at the pub, and my website is Redneck Now. Uh, no, my name is Charles Daring. I'm an idiot. I love NASCAR. All the rest of y'all can kiss my behind. Uh, websites, Wooden Visions. <laughs> yeah, uh, go Junior. Uh, uh, what is my website? Wooden Visions. <laughs> Just find me. <laughs> It's woodenvisions.com. How did you remember all of that? <laughs> I, I, I pre-planned it. And by the way, my sponsor is on the panel tonight, Tom G. Workshop. He makes awesome full-size, mid-size, and mini-sized carbide cutting tools. Go to Tommy G. Workshop and get yours today. Cool. Let's try one more time to go back to uh, Dan. Uh, Dan, you can unmute yourself and try one more time. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Dan Angebretson. I'm Dan Angie Wood, and that's on uh, YouTube, Facebook, um, Pinterest, and then Twitter is uh, Disc Golf Trains. And that's where you can find me at. Cool. And Dan does a lot of uh, scroll saw work. Yeah, getting better. Getting better. Ah, stuff I've seen looks pretty doggone good. Well, thanks. Yeah. You know, I'm my worst critic, critic, you know. So I think we all are. But good to have you. I hadn't seen you in a while, but good to have you. Thanks. All right, guys. Uh, I'm not going to be able. I've got. Uh, I think Michael uh, said he was going to watch over there for questions. If you have any in, on the YouTube chat, unfortunately, because I'm going to be doing a uh, thing on Corel Draw tonight, I'm not going to be able to look over there that much and see. Uh, Who's uh, if you have questions? Who's all in the chat? So I'm sorry. I love y'all, guys. I'm glad you're over over there. Donna Presley's over there. Patrick's workshop. Uh, Nathan Longfellow, Mark Lindsay, Donna Presley. All y'all are over there. So hi, guys. But uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be doing a lot of screen sharing. And um, tell Donna not to leave none of them order moccasins laying around before, when she leaves. Yeah, really. Yeah, she's she's been she's been getting some snakes lately to make some uh, snake pins, and that that's that's really interesting. But we're gonna go back to uh, the basics. I hadn't done this in a while. I had a lot of emails and talk about Corel Draw. I use Corel Draw X7. Uh, another good program out there that is free is uh, Inkscape. Uh, so a lot of y'all, if you want to download Inkscape, I think it's Inkscape.org. Type in Inkscape. Be very careful about where you go, though, when you get Inkscape, because there's a lot of rogue places out there. If I'm almost positive, it's Inkscape.org where you can get it. But it's a free vector program. And but uh, a lot of people ask me about Corel Draw, how I design, and I'll just go over some of the basics to show you how to use Corel Draw. I will. Uh, I can get more ex extensive in it and possibly do some more YouTube videos. But uh, that's what we're going to be able to go over tonight. The difference between Corel Draw and uh, and Photos, which are uh, Corel Draw, is a vector graphic program. And I'm going to go over here and start screen sharing. Can all y'all see my uh, screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is Photoshop. And now Photoshop deals with photos, which are raster graphics. A raster graphics uh, deals with pixels, and those are millions and tiny small blocks of color. Each one of those little blocks contains information about color, and that's what makes up the picture. So when you have a small picture like this, it looks nice and great, but when you zoom in on it, as you get closer and closer and closer, now you can start seeing those little tiny squares which carry the information of the color for that little section and it actually will get uh, worse and worse and worse the bigger you make it. So if you have a small picture, let's say a wallet size picture, and you want to make it to a 8 by 10 for instance, it's not going to happen because what's going to happen is once you blow it up, like it's happening right here, it's going to get so pixelated that you won't be able to see uh, the clarity of it anymore and so that's the difference between raster graphics and um, um, vector graphics. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, vector graphics. So I wanted, didn't want to do that. 
tell it no. So the difference is, is Corel Draw deals with vector graphics. It deals with line segments and nodes, and then it deals with the computer able. It's able to compulate the location and position on like the X Y Z axis, so that when you make a star, for instance, if I come over here and uh, do a star, and I make a star at this size right here, you'll notice that if I zoom in on it the line quality stays the same. But if I make the star larger, continue to blow it up, and actually Corel Draw will make things a lot larger than, they, that's an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper right there represented in that little, so you can imagine how big this is starting to get. If you zoom in on the line quality, it's still there. It does not pixelate, it holds its quality very, very, very well. So that's the big difference. That's the reason you want to try to, um, I like or enjoy making things like patterns and stuff with Corel Draw being a vector graphic because once I make something, if I say I make it into a form of, let's say, uh, three by five or whatever, and I go back next week and somebody says, I like to have that same thing but blown up to an eight by 10. Now I can go back in and very easily make that thing into an 8 by 10 and not have any problems whatsoever with the clarity of the lines and everything still be there. So that's the big difference between those two. This is your palette it's represented as an 8.5 by 11. Corel Draw will go way bigger than that. Uh, you can zoom way out. It will do, uh, actually it's, it's comparable to, in a lot of ways to a CAD program in, in, in some ways. I said comparable. It's not exactly like one, but I have made designs on the uh, Corel Draw. I made them larger and printed them out onto paper and been able to make uh, smaller uh, items. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something like two foot by three foot. Been able to do that very well with Corel Draw. So it's capable of making a lot bigger. Uh, smaller uh, items. I'm gonna... Oh, I'm, I'm getting some feedback from somebody. I don't know who that is. So anyway, so that being said, this is your, uh, this is your uh, piece of paper. This is like the palette, so to speak. And we're just going to do a simple rectangle here. And what that's going to re represent, that is a layer. The page being in the back, this is like our first layer or our first page above everything else. So everything we work on is, now this is not a blank layer. Even though you can see through it, that doesn't mean anything. This is rep as representation of a square, and as far as the computer's concerned, this is full. In other words, it's colored. I can add color to it so that you can see what I'm talking about, but it is colored. It is full. It is not a blank square. So this is basically your palette, and everything you add will go on top of the palette, but you also have a thing up here um, as far as a range where you can order it in front of the page, back of the page, in front of layer, behind layer, so you can move things around even though this may be the starting of what we're going to do. So uh, real quick, like I'll go over, let's say that we want to make this as a sign, for instance, and I want to add the letters and everything to a sign, which you could, this could be used for a scroll saw pattern or could be used over onto, uh, as, on the CNC to be able to cut something out. Um, this is our first little step as a palette. If you'll notice up here when I uh, grab this, I have uh, three different tools up here that I could use real quick to make the corners on this. You have a round corner, a scallop corner, or a uh, camphored corner. And what you can do is if so there's a little lock here, if you have this lock locked down, when I make one adjustment on any one corner, it will transfer to all four corners at the same time. So I can just change this to the uh, scallop corner and then I can ramp this right on up and you will see it will start to scallop the corners or you can just come in here and simply type into one of these 0.75 enter and boom it will scallop all four corners for you at the same time so that's one way of making just a little quick easy little sign so let's add some text to our sign now we come over here we go to the text tool Bring it out over here, and now we're able to add text. You can change whatever text you want. 
Uh, I, I I particularly like Cooper Black for a lot of my projects, so I can type in. And a lot on your scroll saw projects, uh, especially, it's a lot easier to use and work with capital letters. So I'll do this in caps uh, to begin with. So we'll just put up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create another line. And the reason I'm doing that is I'll show you in just one second. But now once we have that done, we can change the size of the font here, which will increase it there also. But we can also click on this pick tool, and you'll notice that it has six boxes that surround it. You can grab one of those corners and automatically enlarge this to whatever size you want. And if you want it in the center, just simply hit the P key, which stands for page, and it will center it there. I grab a hold back of my square, hit the P key, and it centers. So now the square with scalloped corners is in the center of the page, and the rest was here is in the center of the page. Real quick, if you come up here, you'll notice horizontal alignment. I can come down here and tell it to center, and it now will center uh, all the words in in this and I can continue to enlarge it like so. Well as far as I'm concerned, you can stop right now. You've already told me everything I needed to know. Well, there you go. <laughs> Your champ for corners right there. I couldn't I can never make them. <laughs> and uh, when I make my signs, I have me a uh, a washer out there about the size of a quarter and I use that to draw me a line around it. Mm. I can't make them doggone things and, and, and Inkscape. I don't know how to do it. No, nope. and that's I, a sweet. I, I loved Inkscape. I used Inkscape at first, and I will not criticize Inkscape because it's a free program and it does a ton of stuff. But Corel Draw uh, is easier to use and just has the more bells and whistles. Charles used to laugh when I said, "Love them bells and whistles," and. Uh, uh, <laughs> But uh, bells and whistles, then uh, Inkscape has, so it's well worth the money if you uh, if you want to buy it. Now, basically, right now, I could take this sign and take it over and turn it into, uh, for instance, I let's clear this out. Uh, but basically, I could take this sign right now and tell it to file, uh, save as, and come down here and save it as a. DXF file, and now I'm off to take it over to uh, uh, VCAR for a CAD wow. set up to CNC. So very easy. But now if we wanted to scroll this, uh, which a lot of people want to learn how to do, so you'll notice that the U, the S is fine, the W, S, H is fine, E, uh, all the E, but we have a problem with the R. We have a floater in here. And we also have a problem with the A and, again, the R. Mm -hmm. So we need to get rid of those floaters. There's uh, a few ways you can do it, uh, which uh, one of the ways that I do it is I just simply – here, I'm going to go ahead and change this over to uh, – oops, wrong one. There we go. So we can see it like that. One of the ways I do it is you can take this little square – or go over to the rectangle box, then come straight down. If you don't, if you're good enough where you can get by with just one avenue into the floater, you can do this. Come in here just like this, and then I want to take my pick tool over here to the little pick tool, and then I'll line it up on the lines a little bit better. Got it there. Then hold down the shift key. Once this is selected, hit that and hit hey, back Ryan, minus front. I don't mean to interrupt. To interrupt. Uh, I, you just, by the way, anybody listening, he just said hit back minus front. But people are wanting to know if SVG, uh, if SVG files will work in that program and can it be saved to an SVG file? Okay, I didn't quite understand what you said. If an SVG file, what now? If an SVG, an SVG file can be brought into Corel Draw and and can it be can a file be saved as an SVG in Corel Draw? Um, good question. Let's say save as. 
The SVG right there. SVG, scale vector graphics. So, yes, it, we can. Now, what you would have to do is rather than just bringing it in, uh, you would have to go into the file and then import and then take it over to an SV. Right, this is now located as all file formats. So let's go down and see if it says SVG. And there yep. you go. So we'll bring in SVG files. Good, good point. I usually don't do that, so I wasn't uh, aware of that. But anyway, so yeah, let's back up. Control Z will take me one step back. I have my little square right here. I'm going to take my pick tool. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to highlight the word. And I'm going up here. You'll have you have up here you have weld, trim, intersect, simplify, front minus back, back minus front, create boundary, and you also have over here combine. I'm gonna use the back minus front, which boom, does a little cookie cutter thing and brings this as now that it takes out the floater and I can use it. Now I'll go into a couple of other things in here real quick, but you can do the same thing here. I'm doing this, and the reason I'm doing it this way is, let's pretend you didn't want this as a sign you wanted to use in another application. This is one of the ways you can get rid of the floaters. Uh, over here, if you go to down here to freehand tool, hold, click on that and hold down, you'll see freehand, two-point line, Bezier, artistic. I love the pen tool. I click on pen. I can come in here. I can click in here. I line this up with the lines. Come over. Close the box off by going back to the first node. Go back to my pick tool up at the top. That's already selected, so I hold down my shift key. Hold it down, which selects the word was. Go to back minus front, and boom. Now I have to eliminate the floater for that one. So that's one way of doing it, uh, of eliminating the floaters and all this. We'll go down here to the R. I, can do, I don't have to do the square. I can do the same thing with this R. Just showed you real quick why I do the square. Do the same thing. Shift. Oop, didn't highlight something. Away. Back minus front, and now we have uh, what I would say is a we could actually scroll this out without any problems. But the problem of it being is it's not unified. It's not it's letters on top of a box with scalloped corners at this point. Um, because if I come in here and I change the color of the box, the letter stays the same, and that's all nice and good. But they're not one piece, so to speak. So control Z back out of that. So but what I can do is I can take the letters, hold down the shift key, go over to the square and tell it back nine, back minus front. And now if you'll notice when I uh, change the colors and change the line, it's this is all now it has been like a cookie cutter. It has taken the rust that was here and actually cut it out of the sign in the back. So this is now one solid piece. Quick interruption. Uh, Donna Presley in the outside chat is saying you can get uh, Corel Draw PaintShop Pro X7 Ultimate for 29 something on Amazon. I totally lost it. It, it scrolled away. But I just thought anybody watching might want to know that. That's not Corel Draw. That's not Corel Draw. Yeah, it's not Corel Draw. That's why I didn't say anything. I'm just repeating what she said, okay? Corel Draw owns it, but uh, that's not the same program. Yeah. I'm looking at Amazon right now, 55 bucks, Corel Draw, Home and Student Edition. Yep. I pay, if you want the uh, don't want the Home and Student, which the Home and Student kind of limits you, it's a great program, don't get it long, but it kind of limits you. It, uh, still, Corel Draw, the uh, full version is uh, only around 100 bucks. Yeah, there's an academic X8 academic version for 98 dollars. Yep. 
So but now uh, back again, this is a one solid piece, so matter no matter how big, and if you'll notice here, it's telling me this is 11.651 uh, by 7.804. Uh, it's telling me the size. A good thing about this also is it's if you have this little lockdown, when you drag from these corners, it will automatically keep the ratio as to whatever size you want it. Now, yes, you can come in here and you can make it skinnier, or you can make it shorter this way. Hit control, uh, control Z, Control Z, it takes it back. But if you do it by the corners, it will keep the aspect ratio. So th if this was a five by seven, if I shrank it or pulled it up, it would keep those two inch dimensions between the lit width and the length the same as a five by seven. So when the next one would jump up to would be a seven by nine, then it would jump to a nine by twelve. So you could continue that up. So that's that's just one day, a uh, one way, real quick of uh, uh, doing something. I really like that way of doing it. And then once again, this can also be taken straight in over to as a DXF and used as a CNC on the CNC machine. Now, naturally, you wouldn't want to have to have these cutouts on a CNC machine, but that's that's just one way that you could do it. Uh, let's don't just get rid of this. Let's go back to my desktop real quick, and uh, we'll go over something real easy. Now, it's, you can I just simply copied that. I didn't have to import it, and I can hit Control V, or I can hit uh, edit paste up here, which is Control V is the short key. But um, this is just a PNG, which is a raster graphic at this point. It is not a vector graphic. Uh, we can do several things with this. Uh, number one, I want to try to go ahead and turn this into a vector graphic. So when I scale it, it maintains the same. If you'll notice when I highlighted this up here at the top, it brought up this edit bitmap and trace bitmap. Okay, I want to go up here to the trace bitmap. I want to go to outline trace over to line art. And what it's going to do is now it is actually taking this bitmap and it has traced it and it is now turning, getting ready to turn it into a vector graphic <laughs> file. Now you can play around with the, the detail and make uh, change the detail on it, make it greater or uh, smaller, the smoothing, the corner smoothing. All these settings, you'll have to play around with them, make a different corner smoothing is, is exactly like it says. It'll make the corners either more pinpoint as a square or rectangle or rounder uh, smoothing, just overall smooth the lines out. Uh, one of the good things that I like to do is down here, if you'll notice, this is remove color from entire image. I like to do that and get rid of all the color, which it does not eliminate the white in the middle, but it eliminates all the other colors that might be in that vector. And I simply just tell it, okay. Uh, another thing, uh, here, let me go back and tell it trace bitmap, outline trace that I forgot to show you is uh, you want to go to a delete original image. Up here, I've got this checked. If you don't, then you will have the original bitmap image on there. And it, I just do it because why do you want the other image on there? And it can be, if you're not aware because they lay one on top of the other that it's there, can actually cause you problems. You'll forget that it was there, and the next thing you know, you got it into evolved into a layer and. Just go ahead and click this little box and tell it to delete the original image, remove all the colors, and tell it OK. So now I have, and if you'll see, it says group of two objects on layer one. This is actually put it into two objects. I now have a vector graphic that I can blow it up, and the line segments will stay the same. That's exactly how you do that. And then you can take this. I haven't tried this, so we're going to try this real quick until it sh shift back minus front and boom. You just cut cookie cut a daisy right in the middle of your project. <laughs> just that simple.
Now, yes, it did not get the little center part. You'd have to put that in there, but that would be a floater anyway. You would have to add it, but real quick like it did that. So I can hit Control Z and come out of that. Come out of that real quick. That put that in there. Now, sometimes when you um, try to trace a PNG, they don't always work that great. Hey, Russ. So, yes. Real quick, there's a question if you can scan in a photo and then turn it into a scroll saw pattern. Turn it into a what? To turn it into a scroll saw pattern. You can, uh, but it takes a whole lot of work to be able to do that. Okay. But yes, you can do it with this program. I have done it before. I know I saw one of Charles's. This is my. I saw one of Charles's do one, and it was sped up. I don't know, yeah. 16 times or something. It, the video is still 10 minutes long, so I imagine it takes a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a drawn-out process, trust me, but you can do it with this. Okay. Uh, well, let's could, go ahead. Couldn't you put it into, a, like, I use paint.net. I can take a photo, put it in there, and turn it into a pencil drawing. Yeah, I use paint.net. And thicken up the lines and then export it. Couldn't you use that? Uh, that I don't know because I don't use that program. So I can only tell you what about this and what I've been doing. So anyway, this is let's go back to the trace thing. Let's say that I tried to trace this and it just did not work. Uh, it was too pixelated. The lines weren't good enough. There was a break. If you have breaks in the lines in here uh, and you try to trace it, the breaks will show up and it won't make it a solid piece. So now we're gonna. Sh I'm gonna go over real quick. This is still a PNG. I have not converted it over. I can make it bigger, but I have not converted it over as far as a vector. But how I trace things, and sometimes if it's a small pattern, uh, I, I just trace it just for the heck of it because it's easier for me to trace it. I know I've done it so much that it don't take me but a few minutes. But how I would do that is I would go over to the pen, back to the pen tool. And um, I usually try to change this to a different color. Uh, let's go ahead and start it. So I'll come down here on the corner of this and start a line segment. This is a node I just dropped, and this is a line segment that I'm going with. Let's go ahead and ch oops, change, change this to yellow and change the background to nothing so I can see the line a little bit better where I'm going. Then I'm going to bring this right on around. And I'm basically I'm going to trace the outline. Now all I'm doing to zoom in and out, I have a, a, a roller on my mouse. I have set, you can change the settings in Corel Draw and make your roller to be able to zoom in and zoom out like I'm doing it makes it ten times better. But you come back to the first node and lock it in. Now you've got all these line segments and nodes. I'm going to come up here to the second one is your shape tool. This shape tool deals with nodes and line segments. It allows you to shape them. So I get my shape tool. I'm going to highlight all these nodes in that one area and go up here to this little button up here that says tell it to convert it to curves. Now very simply it has converted all these line segments into curves. So now I can come back and really easily start moving these curves in and out around these areas. I can move the nodes. I can tell it to, I can highlight this node and tell it to make it symmetrical. Or I can tell it to smooth the node. Hit Control Z and tell it to make it symmetrical. Control Z. Or let's say I just want to leave it as a point. But I come around here real quick and just trace this out. into whatever shape I want it. And then there I have it. If I take and grab my PNG in the back and tell it to delete it, 
there have that section. And all I got to do is go back over here, get my pen tool, start here. And once you've been doing this as long as I have, guys, it doesn't take very long to learn and to trace. Oops, I've got that is. That and this should be yellow. Go back over here to my shape tool. Highlight all these guys. Tell it to convert it to curves. That's this little curvy line with the two nodes right up here. The next one in line with that would be convert to line, which we don't want to do. We want to convert it to curves. But I can immediately come in here and shape this thing around whatever shape I want it to be. Uh, the node's in the wrong place, so I can move it out. And then these little handles also allow you, on the end of these nodes, to manipulate however you want. I just find it a little bit easier just to grab out here in the center of the line and drag it to wherever I want it. I'm doing this rather fast, so... Oh, come on, get in there. But there have the second segment. This is way out there. You see how this one's kind of like, eh, didn't do too good of a job? At that point, I can highlight this node and tell it to uh, smooth the node and see how it will do it automatically for me. Wow. Uh, this one's not too great. Highlight this. See how I've got a dip in there? I just highlight this node, tell it, smooth that node out, and it'll help make it smoother. Same thing with here. Smooth the node. It'll help make it smoother. Now, if you do that on the end point, naturally it's going to make it round. You no longer have a uh, control Z. You no longer have a point. It smooths it out round. So very quickly you can... Uh, I find myself doing this more than I do tracing. Uh, you can actually, for instance, this this is an oval. I can I could actually bring an oval in here and manipulate the oval if I wanted to. But I'll just go back and show you how you can uh, control Z. Somehow I've got these funky colors coming into my project that I did not want. Let's go back with a pen and I'll just come in here real quick and do a square. show you what you can do. Change this to yellow. Come back. Chain go up here. Convert to curves, which allows me to convert all these to curves. And real quick, even though I know I can make this with the oval, and then I can come back here and highlight these and tell it to smooth it. and make a circle out of it anyway without having to make use the oval. But sometimes maybe it's not a perfect oval or whatever, and you're going to have to manipulate the other oval anyway to make it look right, so, so to speak. So I find it just as easy to do this, and I can... So basically I just turn that square into somewhat of an oval. But... The same aspect goes back to once I get these, I can delete this image. Let's say that I've got all this image done, and I want to put these onto back to my sign again. Why the heck do I getting the grays that's coming in? Now, what did I just do there? This was the back of the palette with those designs on them and actually the first one was at the back the second one and the third one came forward each one layer so I've just placed this over the top of them so the back minus front and everything's not going to work but real easy you can take this and highlight it and go to arrange order and order it to the back of the page or to the back of the layer either one so now this is just pushed. Remember, this is not an empty block. This has, it's full. 
And so I just shoved it now from the very top all the way to the very back. So now I can take each one of these and hit shift, collect my square, and hit back minus front, and it just cookie cuttered that right out of that square. So now that's one solid object. Same thing with this. Shift, back minus front, and then this, shift, back minus front. Now this is all one solid object, uh, no matter where I blow it up or whatever I do. And another thing too, let's say that I come in here now and decide, you know, now these are all, you notice when I have it like this, these are all, you can see all the nodes and the line segments. When I go back up over here to the shape tool, these nodes and line segments, because they've been cookie cuttered out, so to speak, of the square, uh, I can manipulate them and change the size of them still inside this square. I have not lost the ability. If I decide I want this thing bigger, or I want it closer, or I want to manipulate it, I have not lost the ability to do that. I can come in here now and manipulate this in any way, shape, or form. Oops, I want to do that. Oh, all right, why do you keep doing that? Because I'm not grabbing it on the center. But I can manipulate these in any way, shape, or form I want to. I can make this into a egg, so to speak. And then you can uh, highlight the back of that, and that gets, shows you a good representation, and then turn all the lines into red, and that's ready to scroll out. I could have re uh, didn't have a lot of time. I could have done the um, whole flower and done the same thing, and so what you could have done is cut the flower out onto the background and, and then put a backer behind it, and that's how you would have done that. So... That's how we're doing on time. Forty. We only got ten more minutes. So that's just a. Uh, I've just touched the iceberg uh, as to what Corel Draw can do. Uh, Corel Draw is fantastic. But there's just a couple of things there that I showed you that you could do to uh, in Corel Draw. Any more questions or everybody's real quiet. I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, the there's question a lot was, of, go ahead. Do you do you rather would I guess would you rather purchase the program outright or do you do the yearly subscription so you get the new versions? I do it. I buy, I buy it outright, and then every time a new version comes out, I get I buy the new version. Okay. <laughs> it's not that expensive. Trust me. I made I make uh, in the patterns that I design and the scroll saw and things that I sell off of making stuff with Corel Draw, I make the $100 back easy. A couple of sales and I've already made my $100 back. And it's just such a powerful, power. The only program that I would say that is far outweighs that I have uh, played around with and used is Adobe Illustrator. It, Adobe Illustrator, I admit, hands down, is better than Corel Draw. It can do more than Corel Draw, but here's the problem. Adobe Illustrator, if I'm not mistaken, is probably about a five or $600 program. And so it's just way... Well, you can do the, month, the monthly memberships now. Yeah. So it's just way out of the ballpark, if you ask me. And plus, it's a lot harder to use. Uh, I've used it, and it was, like, way over my head, even though I understood nodes and everything. Uh, so Corel Draw was so much... Corel Draw is more of an artistic, uh, a user-friendly, uh, a hobbyist, us, the kind of people that we are that use it. It's designed to make it easy to use... I understand that people look at it and go like, oh, wow, this is so hard. And it was for me at first. Heck, Inkscape was hard for me at first. But once I got the grasp on how to use it and what, how it worked and how, what it represented, or represented, I just took off on it and, wow, haven't never looked back. And I still go to this hands down. Even though even VCarve has its own little thing where you can draw and everything in on it, I just love this and have done it so much that I can come in here. I can create this sign. You saw how quick I created this sign. 
and I can do other things like that too. Created it so quick, turn it into a DXF, take it straight over to VCarve and put it on and have it coded and ready to be on the CNC machine in a few minutes. Or I can do exactly like we did here and take out these little, um, make these not um, islands anymore and turn it into a scroll saw pattern. I've done it so much that it's just a matter of a few minutes and boom, I got a pattern I'm ready to cut. And, and it's not, I want to point out, I'm not bragging, I'm not saying I'm that smart, I'm just telling you I have used it just on a day in and day out basis and if you get it and you do that too, you can be just as proficient. It just takes some time, some patience, and using it. That's all it takes. So, I'll stop sharing this. Uh, it's that's basically all it is. It's just you having the time and patience to sit down and learn how to use it. And once you go to that point, it's uh, it opens up a world of things that you can do and designs and things. I've got uh, I taught a friend of my uh, my son uh, Corey who was a Marine. His name is Zach, and he um, is an art. He is a natural born artist, and he wanted to learn how to use Corel Draw. And I, he came over and sit with me for a couple of hours. Within that couple of hours, I was able to show him how to do it, and he understood it and grasped it. He went back and now he's creating his own designs for his own t-shirt company through Corel Draw, and he has his own t-shirt company and he's using Corel Draw to make the designs for him. So, and I only spent a couple hours this boy. He just grasped it real quick, understood, and boom, off he went. So it's powerful. It's a powerful program. It's not that expensive. Uh, it's a very good program. It, people say it's not user friendly. Yes, it is. You just have to understand. Watch. There's tons of. I'm not the only. Uh, there's tons of videos on YouTube that you explain. Do the explaining. I just touched the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, on well, how to use it tonight. That was just a real quick uh, explanation. So there's a lot more stuff that can be learned. So. Photoshop is fantastic. Uh, Jerry Brown over there said, I've been using Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop for 20, uh, I don't know. I, I started using it, in the, I think, in the early 90s is when I started using Photoshop. And so I know it's been over 20 years. But Photoshop is fantastic for photographs. It works. You can manipulate photographs. You can change the color. You can change the sharpness. You can change tons of stuff. And Photoshop is one of the premier programs for photographs. So, but uh, once again, uh, raster graphics, vector graphics, two totally different things. In Photoshop, you, you, you can put people in two twos? Oh, yeah. I love Photoshop. And if I'm going to manipulate a photo, it would be one of the programs that I would take a photo. If I had a photo that needed to be uh, something done to it, I would never take it into uh, Corel Draw. I would take it over into... Uh, Photoshop to do my manipulating, cut out what I wanted to cut out, fix a face, you know, fix something, take out a blemish or whatever, take that over to Photoshop. Now, if I wanted to add letters to a photo, I would take it into Corel Draw because I can do it ten times easier in Corel Draw than I can in Photoshop. I can, you can import a photo into Corel Draw and you know, photograph and add letters to it. Like if you wanted to put like, you know. Just uh, like the, most of the stuff I do for my uh, advertisements or whatever, if you see a photo like the baby with the beard that says, let's talk shop with Russ Show, the photo was taken into Corel Draw and all those words were added in Corel Draw, not in Photoshop. So it just doesn't manipulate the pixels in a photo like Photoshop because Photoshop's designed to do that. So. But we're rocking down here. I have to take just a couple of minute break. Uh, Y'all want to talk among yourselves real quick? <laughs> no. Through their nature. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. It's called uh, something just kicked in. Uh, so uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> but we're live. We got the. We can't. You want to let us by ourselves talk along? That's <laughs> probably not a good idea. <laughs> well, when the boss leaves, you're in trouble. Don't talk about NASCAR. 
There was a young lady from Nantucket. No, never mind. You just opened the bloody door for that NASCAR day, nabbit. <laughs> All right, then. I get NASCAR. I, I mean, I just don't enjoy watching it. I'm, it's cool yeah. sport. I mean, I'm from North Carolina. I mean, <laughs> half our revenue come come from people that from the NASCAR that started yeah. it. I, I understand people enjoying it, but I outgrew caring about cars about 23, 24 years old. I was a typical teenager. I was into it and stuff, but... When I realized it was a mechanic, I could just pay him. He fixes it for me. You know what? We'll go on that route. So, and watching cars, it just doesn't do it for me. So, well, I've got my cars fixing for me. A lot of people start watching NASCAR to see the wrecks, but and I can't speak for everybody, but and I know Russ, we totally went off the rails of the topic. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, y'all, y'all sure did ditch that real quick. <laughs> Most people start watching it for the wrecks, but when you when you follow a certain driver and it, and they're racing neck and neck, it gets exciting. It's hard to explain until you're into it. My well, brother, I, just, I I get that part. I'm a road racer too, so I you know so I'm on the roads too. I understand the racing part, but just sitting here on the TV watching, I, I just can't do it. <laughs> well, I'm mean, watching baseball or golf. It's kind of like football. I I used to love to play football, but I never could sit there and watch it. Oh, I can do that. Now. I can no, watch football. I, I can't watch baseball or basketball. Well, we, we lost yeah. Corral real fast. <laughs> of all, I leave y'all for five seconds. You can totally ruin the show. Oh, Donald uh, Jeff Robinson wants to know if your green screen turned gray. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the, the green screen's out there in the shop. This is uh, just white. I just ain't never took off the wall yet. <laughs> Anyway, sorry about that, folks. I, uh, usually I can make it through the entire show before I have to uh, potty. There's no other way of saying it. So, yes, I did have to potty, and so I took a little two-second break, and they all destroyed the show in the same time. Like, Which, <laughs> technically, about the green screen thing, I could technically use this if I, my lighting was a little bit better. However, given my skin tone, I'd disappear. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand. The reason you choose a green in the back, in my green screen, is because it's one of the least colors that is in the human facial, in other words, your anatomy. It's your skin tones and everything don't use green. Usually your hair doesn't use green. Uh, it can be in your eyes. Yes, you can have hazel eyes or green eyes, but... As a normal green is easy to correct or remove. You can use any color. You can use red. You can use yellow. You tell the computer when you do the getting ready to use um, uh, it, the. It's called chroma screen. When you get ready to tell the chroma screen, you can tell it what color you want to delete. It can be red, black, any color. Uh, once again, the reason they choose green is the next popular color is blue. Uh, usually blue or green screen. Those are the two ones. But it's done in the um, software to tell it eliminate everything in that picture that is that got this tone, which is green. So uh, Donald's right. He could you could tell it eliminate the gray, but there's a lot of gray in his. Look at the gray in my beard. I'd just, mm -hmm. I'd be worse than Donald. You might see Donald's two little uh, big little eyes on there. That's, I've had it happen before. Where I try I tried to be smart. Everybody used to say, I was going to be smart and make a video. See, you don't have to use green, and I use this white. And I was there no more. You saw a little beard hanging around in here. <laughs> well, guys, it's it's rocking on time. I want to thank everybody um, for being over there. Uh, Jerry Brown went over there. Al Forte. Um, Michael Chipcher is talking a lot over in the chat section. So he's, uh, Jeff Robinson's been over there. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, sorry I wasn't able to pay as much attention to y'all over there as much as I usually do, but I um, will do some more of this. I'll tell you what, if y'all want um, out there listening, want more uh, me to do more Corel video, or Corel video, Corel Draw tutorials on Saturday nights, I would be more than happy to do them, and I'll prepare more stuff. I just need to hear from you. Uh, send me an email to russ uh, at simplywoodencreations.com 
telling me, hey, do some more. I get people send me emails all the time, so tell me what you want me to do, and I'll be glad if you want to. I'll be glad to do more Pharrell, Pharrell draw. Uh, uh, real quickly, uh, Jeff Robinson wanted to know what program you all use for the green screen. I use Corel Video Studio Pro, and Donald uses Blender. Blender, yeah. I use Blender, Blender is a learning curve. I, I, thought, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, I heard Blender is pretty, pretty hard to use at first. It, 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 it's, used, <laughs> it's set up to do 3D graphics and, you know, yeah. for video games and stuff like that. So you, it takes some time learning the X and Zs and all that stuff, but <laughs> after you get it, that's good. I made some stuff in my intros uh, with Blender and everything, but it was just too much of a pain in the butt um, for me to mess with. It was just more of a. Uh, I use uh, for all my my green screen, all my video editing. I use uh, Corel makes Video Studio Pro, so I use X9. And at, at the time I started doing it, I looked at the uh, Corel of uh, Sony Vegas and. Of course, Photoshop, uh, whatever the which ones that theirs is, and it it was just out of my price league. I couldn't right. do it. And a Blender's free, and Inkscape's free. And mm. don't get me wrong, if you want to go over to Inkscape, a lot of the stuff that you'll learn in Inkscape, you can bring over into Corel Draw and use it over there. It's just I've got that, that. I just had never took time to really. Hey Russ, uh, Bookflow works. Ask if for you can do photo. To scroll pattern in a future video. Sure. Yeah, so I'll, like bring, I'll do that. Johnny Cash or something like Charles does. Yeah. I'll bring a photo over into uh, Corel Ball and show you how to. Uh, I turn I'll it into a pattern. I'll send you a picture of me. And give you something yeah. really to work with. <laughs> so if you're talking about being able to do produce what Charles produces, it's not going to happen because that's not what Charles does. Charles, actually, you want to tell him how you, uh, real quick, to how you, we'll take a few extra minutes. Uh, Charles does not manipulate or bring the photo into um, Photoshop or GIMP or anything. He does something before that. Go ahead and tell him. Thank you, sir. Uh, no, I, I, I print a picture out from the, from the computer and decide on paper. What I'm going to keep, what I'm going to get rid of, and you put carbon paper under that, and you scan the paper, the clean paper that's under the carbon paper, and I only take it into the computer to clean up the lines, make sure they're all connected, so I can color it in, so people can tell what to cut out, cut out, and what not to. So basically, he traces the photograph through carbon paper onto another sheet, and he traces the photograph, and he says he's the artist at that point. He says, I want this, I don't want that, and he makes up what he wants to transfer over to the pattern. And yeah, so and you can still change your mind even after you've scanned it in. He's like, because some shadow just looks stupid. Yeah, I was going to say, you could probably do it all on the computer. It just probably makes it a little faster to trace it out by hand first. Uh, it's not the same. He gets a lot more detail. Look at his patterns. I mean, his patterns yeah. are some of the best. Uh, patterns that I've ever seen in my entire life as far as scroll saw patterns. I'd state, and it's not because he's my friend. I'll just tell you right up the fat. I'll put his his patterns against anybody's patterns, and they're some of the best in the world. So, uh, but he takes it's because of his artistic ability of being able to say this is what I need and what I don't need to make this pattern that he's able to produce what he does. It's not the uh, it's not the program. Yeah, I imagine it takes some time because it, it it'd be real easy to take away something and it come out not looking anything like what it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, like uh, and and I appreciate the compliment by the way, but it is literally just tracing. But I, uh, but I guess I don't give myself enough credit because a lot of people say, "Well, dude, you still have to have artistic ability." I did used to draw, but uh, but like like on a baby, babies and old people both have wrinkles. But on like some people, it, it, it's just. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm distracted by NASCAR on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> they're turning left. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a bunch of people didn't turn left and they got in a wreck. But anyway, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, <laughs> something about wrink something about somebody's wrinkles. Yeah, if you yeah, had a right uh, turn, you hit a wall. <laughs> yeah, it, it's trial and error on some because. Uh, 
wrinkles to work on others, but you don't want to trace every single wrinkle because it'll be out. It'll be overkill. Uh, but that's you know, back to the artistic ability that you have. You see right. what you need. Yeah, he did a uh, video not too long ago where he did Will, it was Willie Nelson, wasn't Yeah, it? Willie yeah. Nelson was the most recent uh, pattern-related one anyway. That's the one I saw. Right. All right, guys, I want to close this out because I want to get over to Dave's show because he's got Laney over there, and I want to be over there myself. So. Juan's going to be over there turning. I thank you <laughs> for all, all you guys over there. Jeff Robinson's over there, Donna Presley, Moon Pie Creations. Uh, Buffalo Works, thank you guys for watching over in the chat. Thank you, uh, Charles bailed out. Uh, that was Chris. <laughs> yeah, Dan, uh, Donald, uh, John, and Michael, thank you for being on here tonight. I really appreciate you very much. And just one more thing. Just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust, all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in... My beard and hair. Good night, everybody. God bless. Thank you. Good night.